This is, at least for the moment, the fastest gaming monitor you can buy. This is the AOC AG246FK6, and in its overclocked mode, it will run at a blistering, almost implausible, 610 hertz. 610 frames per second. That is unfeasibly fast. It seems almost impossible that this thing can even run at 610 hertz, let alone you'll see a benefit from it. And yet, here it is, and it works. Whether or not you see a benefit though, well I think that's something that we can discover together in this video, so let's get into it. Let's start with a brief tour to see exactly what we're looking at. This is a 24.1 inch ultra fast TN esports panel housed in a compact and flush bezeled plastic frame. It has an RGB ring on the back that you can turn off fully if you want, and has a fully adjustable stand. That stand has height, tilt and swivel adjustment, plus rotation for portrait mode if for some insane reason you want to put a TN panel with horrible viewing angles vertical. The stand actually has a cool set of height and angle markings, so if you're actually an eSports Pro, you can note down your preferences and get it right every time you have to take it to competitions. IO is two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4 ports, and a four port USB 3 hub with a yellow port for charging, and two extra ports on the little pocket on the left hand side. Interestingly, you also get two headphone stands here. One is on the stand itself, a little flip out arm that you'd struggle to use if the monitor was up against a wall. And one is spring loaded on the same side as the USB ports. It's a thin bar that I don't think would be great for your headphones cushions, but it is nicely spring loaded, so there's that. The on-screen menu is controlled with a joystick style switch in the back, and the menu itself is AOC's newer design. It's easy enough to use and pretty big and, well damn does it have a lot of options. You get 21 overdrive modes, local dimming, adaptive sync and so much more. Strangely the default brightness was only set to 10 out of 100, so this thing looks incredibly dim right out the box. Happily though, AOC seems to have got the message on the default overdrive modes as it's set to 10 by default out of 20. We'll come back to how those modes perform later on. The other default seems, uh, well, a little strange at first too. Higher than normal saturation, they call it game color, high black equalizer, but that does make more sense once you realize that this truly is laser focused on being an esports display. That also explains why it just looks so weird. It's oversaturated and yet still kind of bland, lacking contrast and a little grainy. Amazingly though, the color gamut coverage is almost exactly 100% of the DCI-P3 spectrum, which is impressive, although the color accuracy is... Yeesh. A delta E average of 6.16 and a max of 16.72. That's, that's really pretty impressively bad. What's kind of funny is that you do actually get, like if you set this in the sRGB mode, you will get a perfect result. And I know that because AOC include a color calibration certificate in the box showing a sub 1 delta E. In the FPS 1 mode though, it's pretty dreadful. Brightness is good at 400 nits, with contrast only running at around 1200 to 1 or so, with a pretty blue white point, although that is something you can very easily adjust. The big thing with TN panels though is the viewing angles. While sitting perfectly straight onto it, both vertically and horizontally, it can look okay. But at any other angle, slightly too high, a touch too low, tilted slightly off, it looks rough washed out or dim or oversaturated or flat or in my case from this angle literally inverted colors you need to be locked in to view this thing right and for the majority of people that isn't a pleasurable experience kicking back in your gaming chair and watching a film on this thing would be a pretty miserable experience of course we should focus on what really matters for this thing the refresh rate 
If you were wondering if this thing can actually display 610 frames per second, my 1000 FPS camera shows that it indeed can. The ghosting here shows that the pixels can't quite keep up. There's a trail of two or three frames behind the movement, but considering that that is 610 hertz and the frame time is under two milliseconds, 1.64 specifically, it isn't that surprising that a some shade struggle. These are literally crystals being twisted around 610 times per second here, so of course they struggle to do that instantly. Still, if we go frame by frame, with each frame being one millisecond, it takes an average of a frame and a half or so to see what's on the display change. That means that it's running at around 610 hertz. Mental. As for the actual response times, tested with my open source response time tool, available at osrt.com if you want to test your own 610 hertz display, on the default overdrive mode, we get an average of 2.7 milliseconds. That is lightning fast. Not quite fast enough for the refresh rates, although as we've seen from the high speed, it isn't too surprising, with only some of the full white transitions taking a little longer. Interestingly, this TN panel is inverted to VA and IPS panels, where they struggle to go from bright to dark, versus this one that struggles to just get bright. That's kind of funny. Anyway, the default mode has no noticeable overshoot, which leads me to think, can we push this harder? Well, we've got 10 higher modes to do just that, so what does 20 or the maximum look like? Yeah, not great. The average initial response time does drop to just one millisecond, which is amazing, but the perceived time goes up to 3.7 milliseconds thanks to genuinely horrendous overshoot. Like, one of the transitions goes from full white to half white, but it actually drops to zero or fully dark before rebounding back up. Look how far it misses its target. That is terrible. Luckily, there are nine other modes between this one and the midpoints, and 15 actually offers a pretty decent result. The initial response time is just 1.8 milliseconds, really close to the refresh rate window, and the overshoot is much more manageable. It's not perfect, but I think it's good enough. Maybe 14 might balance it slightly better, but it seems around that point is where you want to be. Oh, and the latency is amazing, under one millisecond on average, which is a real competitive advantage. So what does that mean for gaming? Well, for those ultra-fast esports type games, Rainbow Six Siege happens to be my preference there, it is undeniably fast and smooth. The trade-off with the color palette and viewing angles does play a role in the gaming experience, but when you're an esports pro, you aren't playing for the prettiest game, you're playing for kills and wins, and that normally means cranking settings to horrible looking, but utterly effective extremes. This panel does exactly that. The compromise of nav you know, sort of visual quality is more than made up for by the insane smoothness in speed, both in latency and sheer volume of frames per second in your face. As long as your game and system can keep up, which isn't exactly easy at over 600 FPS, you'll get an unmatched experience. For non-esports games though, you're gonna struggle to enjoy them nearly as much as a more conventional display. The compromises work very well for esports games, but the balance shifts for literally anything else. This feels very much like a one-trick pony, which is fine if that's what you want, but if it isn't, well, maybe this one isn't for you. Actually, on the topic of why you might buy a monitor like this, I have a whole load more thoughts about that, so the next video I post will be exactly that. Why. Both why you should, and why you absolutely shouldn't. For this specific monitor though, unless you're actually an eSports pro, I wouldn't recommend this thing. It's lightning fast for sure, and man, the motion clarity is almost unparalleled, but the visual experience relies on you being in the perfect viewing position at all times and putting up with some really naff colors, contrast, and sharpness. 
If you're willing to make that trade-off for everything you use this thing for, remember, not just in games, then you're welcome to splash out the £600 needed to get your hands on this thing. That is an awful lot of money to spend on a 1080p display, although it is in line with the other 600Hz or so displays that are on the market. Although actually, compared to ASUS's 610Hz version of this panel, well, this is an absolute steal. That's more like a grand, so if you are an eSports team, well, actually if you are an eSports team then you probably already have a monitor sponsor, so I guess you'll just use what they give you, but if you do have purchasing decisions, check this one out. For everyone else, I actually have another 500Hz Plus display coming really soon that I think will offer a much better balance. So make sure you're subscribed both to see why you might buy either of those and check out that review when it's out. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about 610Hz monitors? Is that something of interest to you, or is that just not really relevant? Let me know in the comments down below. If you do want to check it out, I will leave a link to it in the description. If you want to check out more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, and check out plenty of other monitor reviews on the end cards. And if you want to be able to test your own monitors, or maybe recommend to your favorite reviewers who I do test monitors. Um, you can check my own hardware out, the open source response time tool at osrtt.com, linked in the description as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.